You're welcome to Pericles, your favorite personal development and self-help platform where we get to talk about books and all of the wonderful benefits we can derive from them to help us be the very best version of ourselves. Iyang Ate Iyang is my name and I'm your host on this show. Now, so much of who we are is the result of the choices we make every day especially those choices that have turned out to become what we refer to as our habits. These and many other concepts is the subject of the book we're reviewing today, The Compound Effect, written by Darren Hardy. And I have with me in the studio a life strategist, a human resources professional, a leadership coach, a friend of over 20 years, Elizabeth Taylor. Thank you for making our time to be part of this production, Elizabeth Taylor. I do not take this for granted at all. I welcome you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And it's also a pleasure to discuss one of my favorite books, The Compound Effect. Interesting. So what exactly about this book? Let's just go straight to it. Yeah. Why would you recommend this book to anyone at all? What exactly is the author trying to say with this book? What is this book really talking about? In one sentence, you get out of life what you create. Okay. It's about... We've had the, the, the concept of responsibility. You have responsibility for your life. It's unfortunate that in, in, in our lives today, everyone has an excuse. Yeah. Everyone has, oh, my cup broke because someone moved the table. It's possible that you had the cup at the edge of the table. Take responsibility oh, for yeah. it. Okay. Take responsibility for it. I did not pass the exam because I didn't do the work. So the main thing is you get in life what you create. So what are you creating? Okay. What are you intentionally creating? What are you putting into your life? Life, everyone's life has a lot of moving parts. You have to master those moving parts. Mm. Someone, moving, moving what? Moving parts. Moving parts. Yes. Okay. A lot of moving parts in your life. Your habits. Um, your to-do list, your goals, yeah. the things you do on a daily basis, um, your routine. There are a lot of moving parts. You don't, you're, you're not a one-dimensional being. Okay. Um, this theory about the wealth segments of life, your mm. wealth segments, your health, your career, your personal development, your circle of genius, your fitness, your, your finances, your health life. There are, nine, there are eight of them, actually. There are a lot of moving parts. You cannot not focus on all of them simultaneously mm. because it's like juggling. Mm. A ball will drop. Oh, suddenly. Now, 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 something you mentioned mm -hmm. when you started talking was on habits. Mm -hmm. And as I introduced this show, I actually mentioned habits. the issue of habits. Yes. And he talked about habits over and over. In fact, I think I'll just start with a quote in, on page 24. He said... Your biggest challenge isn't that you've intentionally been making bad choices. Yeah. Heck, that will be easy to fix. Your biggest challenge is that you've been sleepwalking through your choices. Half the time, you're not even aware you're making them. Our choices are often shaped by our culture and upbringings. That brings a concept that I love so much. And I, when I mentor people, I always like, or when I even talk to people, I always like to drill this down to their heads. Intentionality. Okay, being deliberate. Being deliberate, being intentional. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of us in life today are not, don't live intentional lives. I'm intentional about what I eat. Mm. I'm intentional about what I read. I'm intentional about where I go. I'm intentional about people I surround myself with. Yeah. Because your life will flow in the direction of Because with all of these things, you're actually making choices. Making choices. And then making what he's actually talking about uh, is the fact that those choices are not just choices, but they all compound yes. to become your habits. And then they bring about the result and the experiences I agree. you have. Another thing Darren said, again, in this book, is about um, the big mo. It sounds so personal, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> I've followed nice. him for so long. Okay. I, I've, I follow, I've followed Darren for so long that... I know his life story. He okay. doesn't know me. Oh, I yeah. know almost everything about him. <laughs> okay. yeah. He talks about the big mo, yeah. right? Yeah. And how, about how motivation, uh, momentum, compound effects about momentum. Okay. It's about when you're going, it's like when you're going downhill and you, you, you pick up speed 
and you, 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 your, your, your velocity picks up because of momentum. Oh, yeah. Same thing with life. It can either be positive or, or negative. negative. It can either be positive or, neg or negative. So you have to be intentional mm. about everything you do. If not, if the choices are made for you by the moving parts of your life, oh, wow. the outcome will not be something you like. Wow. That's, uh, that's a huge one. Mm. As in the, the, the fact that all of those things yes. add up to give you your result. And a lot of times, some, some, some of them can actually come pretty negative. Yes. And you don't even realize yes. how. A little sleep, a little, somber, a little slumber, slowly poverty, poverty will rise up and gang up and take you out. So do you get to track everything? Like everything, you get to track everything in your life? <laughs> <laughs> I get to track like 80% of what happens in my life. That's huge. Yeah. It, it takes practice. It doesn't just happen. So as in this is, as in <laughs> you do all me. of that. As this in what me. and what are the things you get to track? I track um, the top five things I want, to, I, I want to achieve in a year. Okay. I track my to-do list. It's very easy to have a to-do list in your head. Okay. And it's, when you get home, it remains in your head. You don't do it. Okay. Remember I talked about tracking with accountability. Yeah. This keeps you accountable. You have to have a tool that keeps you accountable. Okay. I track my spending. So I know, um, that's how I found out that I should never go into a shop without a list. Because I found out that when I go into a shop without a list, I end up overspending. Mm. I track what I eat. Mm. I track what the fruits I take. Because you're supposed to have five portions of fruits every day okay. to be healthy. Okay. See how it impacts your life. <laughs> you also have eight glasses of water. Every day I track, I track but, but can someone really live life like this? I mean, everything you're doing, you're actually taking your time to make sure it goes in a particular way. I mean, the, that, the thing being about that it, intentional. The thing, you have to be. You have to grow into it. You have to learn. It's not something that happens. It, like, for me, it's not as, as if I'm moving through my day with yeah, my book, okay, every okay. counting. No, no, no. Um, I start my day. I, I, sorry, I, I start my day the night before. Mm. By planning the day, the next day. The next day. By putting everything I want to accomplish in that day, the things I want to track, my to-do list, my appointments, my rhythm. Mm. Because you need to make, make um, Darren talks about your rhythm. Make plan for your rhythm. So I, I track my rhythm. So I put it in there. I track my gratitude. I track mm. ideas I'll have. I, what, mm. what, what, what are the things I want to, how do I want that day to look like? Okay. Then I end the day by holding myself accountable. Accountable. As so you, what, you, have a, you get to review how I get the day to review. That's like maybe the end of the day. At the end of the day, last thing I do before I go to sleep. No, second to the last thing I do before I go to sleep. Okay. So I now find out, okay, if That's I didn't do so it... so deliberate. Remember I talked about intentionality? Yeah. You have successful people live intentional lives. If you can't be intentional, um, there's, there's a limit to how much success you will enjoy. Mm. So um, when I look at what I've achieved in that day, I can ask myself questions. So why didn't I do this? Is it because of fear? Mm. Is there a bit of is it procrastination? And I now know what to what screws or knots yeah, to bolt to, tighter. Okay. And I carry over. But can, can people really be this? This is delicate? the third time you're asking me that question. I don't, I don't know. I mean, yes, yes, you know yes. why? Because I've tried. I tried some years back. You know, to be as deliberate. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, apart from drawing a to-do list and yeah. all of that. You know, I, I try to do as much. You know, to meet the my targets and all of that, but all of a sudden I just find out that I'm in a place where I'm not supposed to be. Yes. I mean, what really happened to me? It's, it's quite. In, it's, what I, happened I, to me? I'll say two things <laughs> before I say that. One, I grew into this. Okay. It didn't just happen a day, so it's possible. But then someone will say, "Well, Liz, that's you. That's how you're wired." Mm -hmm. Now I've been. Remember, I said I created this system for myself. When I started coaching people, I started to teach them this system. So I have tons of people who have taught this system and it's working for them. Okay. So they are doing it. So they are tracking their lives and they're enjoying it. Mm. You need to have staying power. Now, this is answering your question. You need to be able to stay the course. Um, that's one. Mm. Stay the course. Number two, don't beat yourself up too much. Yeah, mm. beat yourself up some, mm. but not too much. Yeah. Just, just a, a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a way he placed willpower side by side. Why power? You want to talk about it? Yes, I'll give you a quote from, from the book. And, and I'll read it here so I don't make a mistake. Okay. It says, your choices are only meaningful when you connect them with your desires and your dreams. Mm. 
Mm. In this sense, he's saying your desires and your dreams are your why. Mm. So your choices are meaningful when they are fueled by your why. Why mm. are you doing this? Mm. So why, why do I work so hard? I work so hard so that my children do not have to suffer the way I suffer. We have, our parents yeah, tell us so that. When, it's, when, when, when you remember exactly. your why, why? and it's, it drives it you. It drives you. It drives you. As opposed to willpower. I want to. Where you, I want to. I, but I you don't know to. why mm. you want to. Mm. So you cannot sustain your momentum. momentum. Mm. It's as simple as that. Oh, wow. So if anybody will take, the most important thing anybody can take in their lives... Or if, or if anybody could take anything out of what we're saying, find your compelling why. Mm. Like I said earlier, when you find out your why, how shows up. Many of us are trying to look for how, how, mm. how, how, how. That's how putting I make, the cart in the cart before it's the almost, horse. almost always money. How, how do I get to make more money? Thank you. How do I get to achieve this? Exactly. And then you probably get to achieve it and then you realize that it's not, it's not taking exactly. you in the direction you... Take, for example, what you're doing. Why are you doing what you're doing? That is why you are under this hot light. Mm. You are doing... Is the light hot? <laughs> well, just, just turn it off. We always All say right. that in, in the studio, the lights are hot. Yeah, okay. You understand? Because you know why. You want to pour into yeah, people. Yeah. You want to leave a legacy that lasts beyond you. Yeah. You understand? That's mm. your why. So you will not be a flash in the pan mm. because you know your why. That's, that's awesome. Okay, now let's talk about... Um, the techniques you can adopt as written by Darren Hardy to help you eliminate bad habits. Is it? Would, yes. Would you like to talk about that? Yes. Okay. Darren actually gives four and a half steps. Okay. Four and a half? Four and a half. Okay. Because step four and five are either or. Okay. Based on the kind of person you are. Okay. Right? So yeah. The first thing you, you need to do is find your triggers identify your triggers and to identify your triggers you need to know your big four mm. who what where when who triggers me negatively toxic people mm. emotional vampires <laughs> identify them who what triggers me negatively Darren is one of those people. Darren doesn't watch the news because he, he calls, he says it's uh, constant negative news and it's toxic to his mind and his mm. productivity. So you need to find out what. What are those triggers that are triggering bad habits? I love to read. I love novels. You will not catch me reading a novel within the week, between Monday and Friday. Because that, I can, I can lose myself. Mm. I can lose my time. Yeah. So I know that what. Where is the third of the four big fours? Where do you go to and it becomes a bad habit? Where your bad habits are compounded because it's what, what you're doing is emotional or psychological osmosis. It, things are moving from an area of Higher concentration, concentration to lower concentration. Okay. So you have that bad habit in lower concentration. Then you now go to somewhere that has that bad habit in higher concentration mm. and you now suck in the bad habits. So that's the where. Mm. Identify those places and the when. The when. When, does, when do these things occur? Mm. Um, you, you need to know your rhythm. You need to know your rhythm. If For, for me now, I, I have instilled a habit of sleeping early. So I, I know that if I pick up a book at night to read, I will break that habit of sleeping early. Mm. When? A function of time. Okay. So identify your triggers. Four, big four. Mm. Who? What, where, when. Write it down. Don't just sit down and think about it. Okay, who, what, mm, mm. Write, write it, it down. down. I'm a big, big, I'm very big on journals. Yeah. The next thing you do, clean house. You've identified your big four. Clean house. Remove the mm. enablers. Remove the triggers. 
clean your house, house clean exactly. your emotional house, clean your psychological house. A bad habit and a good habit cannot coexist. And you believe that one day the good habits will edge the bad habits out. No, you have to identify the bad habit, take it out of the way, and then, then plant the good habits. The good habits. Okay. So that's the third step. Mm. Swap. Swap the bad habit mm. for the good habit. Okay. Take the bad habit out, put in a good habit. Mm. You understand? So I tend to oversleep. So manage your time. Sleep earlier. Take away anything that will learn sleep hygiene. Things that will keep you awake at night. Mm. There was a time in my life when trying to get up early to do what I had to do. I had three alarm clocks. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I, one of the affirmations I tell myself, like I always say, it's more than one with skinny cat. You can do it. I put one alarm clock in my bathroom. Mm. I put the alarm clock in my phone by my bedside. And the third alarm clock, guess where I put it? Mm. In my wardrobe. Okay. So, I, and they're all five minutes after each other. So if I snooze the first one, I have to get up and get the one in my wardrobe. If I, perchance, go back to bed, five minutes that the one in my bathroom will, go, will come that's an, that's an int interesting strategy. And you're still running, right? That's the fourth, that's the okay. fourth one. Then okay. the next one, like, like, I'm easing into it. Ease into it, ease into those good habits, or jump into the good habits. That's the either or. Depends okay. on the kind of person you, you are. are. Okay. I'm a jump into it kind of person. Some people want to ease into it. If I want to do something, I found out that I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person that if I have a band-aid on my, on my hand, right, I don't try and remove it small, small. Mm -hmm. I rip it off. Mm -hmm. I go cold turkey. That's not for everybody. Yeah, that's very it's true. It's not for everybody. Yeah, so you true. either ease into it or you jump in. You jump in. Sink mm -hmm. or swim. You, mm -hmm. I'll die and I die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, absolutely. So identify the triggers. Yeah. Know what the big fours are. Yeah. Clean house. Swap it, mm. then either jump in or ease oh. into it. Okay. That's the best way to eliminate bad habits. Wow. It's that actually quite simple. Quite simple. In, quite, on, um, on paper. Quite, uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite on paper, right? Yes. But when you break it down like this, it's doable. Mm. It's, 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 so it's, how long have you been using all of these strategies in this book? 2011. 2011? Yes. Okay. And it has been as rewarding? Yes. Um, this, this, these habits are habits that, that give back. They, they, they actually shine a light on your life because you become a more reflective person. So you now know, when you, as you're reflecting and you're walking through all of these things you're doing, you now know the things that enable you. You now know the things that pull you back. Mm. So you can work on yourself and okay. you can be, get better. It's a gift that keeps giving. So you always recommend this book? Oh, everyone, I, everyone I mentor, has, it, this is required reading for them. So what, what do you think about his writing style? Do you think everything he wrote, had inside this book was particularly important? You know, some people, some authors actually write books and you just wonder why they didn't stop on page 20. You, I know why. Because their publisher told them to write 15 chapters. Okay. But so, Darren is not like that. So everything Every here, chapter counts. Every, every, every chapter did count, the, the, right? We, we've, we've barely gotten through... 80% of what oh, we've written. Oh, certainly, certainly. But I hope that what we've done has made people want to read the book because there's so much meat. Mm. That's one thing about Darren. Darren is not fluffy. He gives you meat. And this is not a book I would tell anybody to, oh, you must read this book within one week. No, mm. you must read the book within one month. No, sit down with the book and chew the book, marinate. The, if, if, a, if a chapter is, seems difficult to understand, don't say, I'm on a deadline. I need to finish this book. Yeah. Go back and reread the chapter. Mm. And then never, ever read the compound effect without a notebook and a yeah, pen. You have to be able to take you notes, to to take do notes, the exercises. Do the exercises. And right. reflect. And reflect. Reflect. Okay, so this, not, it has to be re relatable. You have to be able to you, need to... you need to be able to... Imagine the book is... Um, what is written in the book is juice. Is vitamins. Yeah. You need to be able to inject it into your being, into, into your being. Head. Yes, okay. and that comes by chewing, chewing the book, ruminating, and then the last thing you need to do 
is find someone to tell what you have learned. Okay. That's how you brain tattoo it. Tell someone what you have learned. What did I learn from this book? What you did you learn? From the first quote, you have to be deliberate to make sure you're not drifting. Yeah. That was a very, very powerful message I got from this book because it's very, very possible for you to run one year down the line and you just look back and there's absolutely nothing, nothing to show for it. And you can actually run for five years and 10 years. This book is huge, right? Yes. Thank yes. you very much, Elizabeth Taylor, for Thank doing you. justice to this book. What, what other book would you like to talk about beyond now, beyond the compound effect? <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, there, there are millions, there are so many, so many, so many books. Oh my goodness. Um, and something by maybe um, becoming a key person of influence. Okay, okay. All right, I'll yeah. call you. <laughs> yes. I have so many books that I love. Yeah. Um, there are so many books that have I love. Have you always been a reader? Yes, I've always been a reader. Always? Yes, always. Mm. My mom tells a story of when I was in primary school. She says primary two. And we're living in Lagos. And I kept saying, Mommy, I, I need a book to read. I need a book to read. And so our house was not far from UTC in Lagos. So I hopped into the car. We hopped into the car. We drove to UTC. So from Adeni Jones, we bought, we went to UTC. We bought the book. She bought two books. Mm. I'll never, one of them, I'll never forget it. I still remember the name of the book till today. Wrapping Paper Bush. And... By the time we got home, we're driving into the house. I didn't know, I don't know how we left UTC. All I knew we're driving to the house and I looked up, Mommy, I'm done. Can I have another book? <laughs> and my mom said, read it again. Wow. So uh, it's, it's something, um, it's something, it's who I am. It's, oh, um, I, I believe that when I die, there'll be a book in my hand. When I wow, die, the day nice. I die. That's huge. Thank you very much. <laughs>